Good morning everyone, I am Karen Joy Reyes. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the deductive teaching, one of the methods in teaching grammar. Let us know first, what is deductive teaching? Deductive teaching is more teacher-centered. This is a method that only a teacher are speaking and a student are listening. It means a deductive teaching is more teacher-centered learning where the points of English grammar are explicitly stated to the students and then tested once the grammar is introduced. And explained students usually complete grammar exercise to become familiar with the pattern on instruction before practice. Teacher gives students in a depth explanation of grammatical concept before they encounter the same grammatical concept on their own writing. For example, a teacher writes example of simple present and simple past tense on a board. Then the teacher proceeds to explain the differences between the present and the past in English. Once the lecture is complete, worksheets are handed out and students are asked to convert the same the simple sentence from present to past tense. In these instances, I will give an example of simple present and simple past tense. Example of simple present sentences is, he loves to play basketball. Well, the example of simple past tense is, he loved to play basketball. After I will give an example of simple present sentences and simple past sentences, I will differentiate the two simple sentences. The differences of simple the differences of simple present sentences and simple past sentences that is reused to the present form of fixed events in the future. These things can be changed. The speaker often says when they happen and we use the past form for events in the past the past can be changed. We say or know when they happen when my students understand about the explanations and giving examples, I will give them worksheets about the explanation. In these instances, I will give an example of simple present and simple past sentences. Example of simple present sentences is, he loves to play basketball. Well, the example of simple past sentences, he loved to play basketball. After I will give an example of simple present sentences and simple past sentences, I will differentiate the two simple sentences. The differences of simple, simple present sentences and past sentences, that is, we use the present form of fixed events in the future. These things can be changed. The speaker often says, when they happen and we use the past form, for events in the past. The past can be changed. We say no or when they happen, when my students understand about the explanations and giving examples. I will give them worksheets about the topic and my students are going to convert the simple sentences from present to past. Another example of deductive teaching. Teacher teach everything and students need to give an example according to teacher examples. Now, let's talk about the advantages of deductive teaching. So, we have three advantages of deductive teaching. First, straight to the point, timing, saving, and many rules can be quickly explained, allowing more time to practice. The second, it respects the intelligence and maturity of many students. And the third, it confirms many students' expectation about classroom learning that there are advantages of deductive teaching, there are also disadvantages of deductive teaching. We also have three disadvantages of deductive teaching. First, they may not have sufficient meta-language or may not be able to understand the concept involved. Second, explanation is selection as memorable as another form of presentation. And the third, grammar explanation and courage of teacher-prompted transmission style classroom. I found that the deductive teaching is well capable for teachers who are more concept-oriented or who have limited amount of time to teach a concept. This method is usually a quicker way to teach concepts because it requires less planning time than the inductive methods do additionally. It allows you to use students' responses to build the content of the lesson.
where the trade-off for this efficiency is that not as many students will love the opportunities to participate. As a result, the possibilities for incidental learning are minimized planning as adaptive lesson in both three initiatives. First, planning the activity. The second, executing the activity. The third, evaluating the outcome. Now, let us know what is planning the activity. What is planning the activity? Planning the activity is the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve the desired goals. It is the first and foremost activity to achieve the desired result. It involves the creation and maintenance of a plan such as psychological aspects that require conceptual skills. Now, let's proceed to the executing the activity. What is executing the activity? Executing the activity is taking an idea and making it happen. The execution of a plan is when you put into effect as the execution on the field of a football team game plan. It can also mean the style in which a project is carried out like a ballist creative execution. So that's all about the executing the activity. Let's proceed to the evaluating the outcome. What is evaluating the outcome? An outcome evaluation measures a program's result and determine whether intended outcomes were achieved. It tests hypothesis by comparing conditions before and after participation. By comparing participants with similar individuals who did not participate or by comparing a combination of both. What are the three general initiatives in planning the deductive lesson? Okay, that will be all for this morning. Thank you for watching and listening. Have a good day.